Hey, do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Or do you have an already existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Well, check out WeKnowPodcasting.com. From concept development to theme music to editing to logos, WeKnowPodcasting.com is a one-stop shop for all things pod. Don't hesitate to hit us up. We're very nice. Everybody and welcome to another episode of Horror Movie Night. This week we are talking about Vicious Lips, as picked by Scott. Oh, um, Scott, yeah. this was at one point this was a Patreon pick, and then you were like, you know what? It's horror enough. Let's make it There's just a regular a, it's ass a episode. It's a slasher movie halfway through. All right, so it yeah. is definitely it is viable for a, well, and we're also talking about bringing the gorier sword and sorcery stuff so this really that's true there's nothing about this that isn't already within our bailiwick you know like it's it's empire pictures it's lots of hairspray rouge and eye makeup literally the director of sword and sorceress right i think <laughs> oh really yeah i'm I might be making that up, but I think that you, uh, yeah, I think I'm that you're on sure the I'm pretty sure that you're, you're making that up. Anyway, um, <laughs> I also love the fact that Kyle's final pick before he joined us for real is was an Empire Pictures picture with a lot of hairspray, rouge, and eye makeup. But this is much higher quality. Uh, the, the content is better overall in all sense of, in all senses, because we have really good music we have really bad acting we have more than two spots where they took you know where they did shooting they're in a desert for a little bit you know they've got much better adr and matt can't even be complaining about this movie like there's nothing that anybody can complain about and matt in particular can't complain about this movie because the woman from his pick from about a year ago fade to black is one of the women who's in the band Vicious Lips. And so, uh, Kyle, if you don't know, she's an Australian. Oh, I love the Australian. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is it the Australian in Vicious Lips or is it just a Australian? I think there's only one Australian in Vicious Lips. So, Great, okay. Yeah. Well, her accent the... goes in and out, so I'm, un- I'm yeah. unsure. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that accent lasts about as long as a rail of coke does for her because that's how she <laughs> stayed so thin in the 80s. But she was... She was, I remember this from when we discussed Fade to Black. She was a professional Marilyn Monroe impersonator in Australia. Yep. And then some random director was like, you're going to be in pictures. And so they brought yeah. her to L.A. So I, I want to address a couple things. First of all, Kyle was absolutely right. This director's first movie was The Sword and the Sorcerer. <laughs> he also went on to direct a movie that we talked about on our Patreon page which was Cyborg, and then immediately followed that up with the 1990 Captain America movie, Kickboxer 2, Blood Match, Doll Man, Arcade, which we've talked about on this show. Albert Pune is a cult movie icon that, uh, just like Sam Katzman, does not get enough love, which, I'm sorry, I'm just going to throw this out real quick. I've been drinking themed beers for our (laughs) our recordings. Uh, The Giant Claw was a, a, a beer called I Don't Know Where, but she sends me there, and it's just a big... With him actually having sores on his neck and everything like that, like, so the people that he saw was a doctor or, like, a nurse practitioner, and I took that as a discussion or at least, like, a... a... <laughs> oh, my God, that is so perfect! I mean, let's dive right into it. Uh, you know, I texted you, Kyle... And Scott, we were in a in a group chat. I implied that you were trying to explain to your child that you really had some hot takes <laughs> about Vicious Lips. And you responded that you would try to explain the plot to him. 
the yes. best that you could to which yeah. I was going to say there's only so many ways you can interpret a dream uh, <laughs> we've, we've talked about we are, we, his mom is a psychologist so <laughs> there might be only one in her eyes but <laughs> there's many in Albert Pune's eyes no, uh, this as is, he tried to explain this movie what has been in the water at HMN this year where we have had just so many it was all a dream endings this year Dude. it's not even funny um, this one, I'm I'm like kind of okay with it a little bit more than normal because it's like it's so fucking weird and she has the iconic line, but you're so ugly when she yeah. comes out of the dream. Yeah, <laughs> like, which is what my son said to me when I tried to explain this to him. I mean, this movie shamelessly has a character named Judy Jetson in the very yep. start of the film, yeah. and I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Yes, <laughs> right out the gate, she gets picked up from so so uh, from high school from high school it's a high school um talent show in the future and she comes off stage and immediately is recruited to be the singer of this band now i love this film matt didn't even ask me why i picked it but i'm gonna tell you no, why we're I gonna get it. to it i was gonna ask why why did you eventually pick this also just one last thing hi not Maddie. only not no, only was this uh also you know you made the comparison to like kyle when he picked a movie, picked Necropolis. This came out the same year. It's not even yeah. just from the same director or producer. Oh, this came yeah. out the same year. Okay, and I had already picked it by that point. It wasn't like, oh, I've been thinking about that movie. I forgot about it. Let me put it on the list. My reasoning for, for finally picking this movie as a, a main show discussion is that I've always wanted to do this. I found this movie somehow on some weird whim in some weird subreddit on Reddit back when I Reddited. That's all the Reddits that we're going to get from one sentence. Um, so, them. like, at least a decade ago, if not longer. I'm willing to bet it was as late as 2013 because the only piece of trivia about this movie on IMDb <laughs> is that it had no U.S. release until 2013. <laughs> I watched it on YouTube the first time. So I don't think that it that was necessarily it because that seems way too late for me to to get into t to vicious. I mean life. that was eight years ago. I know, and I'm pretty sure it's. I, yeah, I know. It's insane to think about 2013 is eight years ago, but <laughs> I think that my marriage is shorter than my. Uh, knowledge of vicious lips you know like I, we got married in 2011 and i'm pretty sure I just, that i don't know if when they say a u.s release like when they say it never had a u.s release if they mean it's just too, like it's almost too vague of a, yeah like yeah. i'm like does that mean that it never got released in theaters at all or just like it got dumped into some theaters and they never even considered there being a physical copy available until like 2013. That's not a very Empire Pictures thing to <laughs> yeah. have happened. Yeah. So they definitely I'm not sure had that some distribution. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine somehow. Charles Band was like, no, this one's this was going back in the vault like it's Disney. Back into the Disney <laughs> vault. Every five years, we'll bring out Vicious Lips and tour the United States. <laughs> well, so so the reason why I finally picked it was because this is coming out in December. This is my mm -hmm. Christmas present to myself. <laughs> is to finally discuss Vicious Lips because I've had this soundtrack on my iTunes. I don't know where I found it, but I found some crazy bastard had like upload.net or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Some WinZip file with all of the songs from it. Uh, all the. Uh, you want to call them needle drops, but they were specifically for the movie. But this movie has a lot of musical numbers, and that's. It rips. It's great. It, it's the soundtrack so is great. Reach, reach for your dreams. I mean, it, it starts off strong, and even the soundtrack, you know, not the music music, but the soundtrack itself is great because it sounds like every song in this movie sounds like it's trying to be mid 80s journey. Like everything yes. is center my love or separate ways like everything yeah. sounds like that synthy journey shit which i it's like two love. years dated for the year that it came out it's like yes. just like <laughs> it's just perfect if you live in fucking... canada you know yeah. that's that's what i'm saying the song that hooked me when i watched it for the first time because this is only the second time i've watched it because this was the stars aligning i said to myself i really want to do vicious lips I have been having such a hard time finding a copy of it. It's not streaming for free yet because I'm not making you guys pay three bucks to watch it on, on 
Prime or whatever. <laughs> so I might have. Well, that's your own decision because I <laughs> specifically transferred everybody a link for this because I found the jankiest website, which was it said India's best movie site i remember it being the 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 tag on it but it was like watch or download and i'm like well fuck it i'm not gonna watch it on this crazy ass website with it in like you know five by seven pixels i'm gonna download it and see if it comes to me looking pretty good and it did so now is my time this is the time so this movie i knew i wanted to do it but then when they the save me song so it's it if this movie isn't a stress-inducing dream for you, you've never had a stress-inducing dream because as a musician, <laughs> at least two times a week I have dreams where I'm joining a band or we're doing a reunion with one of my old bands or something like that, and it's like I'm supposed to know the songs that we're going to play in our set, and I don't, and I show up, and I have to like wing it. And Matt, I will tell you, I was uh, filling in for less than Jake last week and I did not know a single fucking song that they were playing because they weren't real less than Jake songs but Judy Jetson just kills it you know, well yeah you ain't no Judy Jetson like, bro you ain't no fucking yeah. Judy Jetson I love I, you Scott you're not a I Judy wish Jetson I was Judy the Jetson. voice that they use <laughs> when she goes up to sing at her high school talent show or whatever the fuck Dude, it is in the beginning that fucking voice it, I was like where did they get this singing voice because like it doesn't even make that's sense. That's Sue Sod. That's her name. Yeah. That's I know that's that her it's, actual singing though. Like, no, no, no. I'm saying the 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 woman who I mean I don't know what the actor's name the actress's name is. Let me. Oh, okay, okay. I was gonna the, say because she goes up there and she's like the most like oh I'm just so like meek and mild like type attitude and then no, she no, just no. is like bah! yeah no no, no. <laughs> so Sue Sad S A A D that's the name of the woman who is the voice of Judy Jetson's character in the movie Drew Ann Perry is the name of Judy Jetson the actress uh, in this okay. movie so and also since I'm looking this up uh, Linda Car- Carriage was the one who played Winsy Crodo who's the one in Fades Black so her skill set is very particular yeah she's probably my favorite character uh, probably my favorite character besides maddie in in the movie oh man that, but also great. he that guy i think is a little too scummy you know he i think he, only because i kept thinking that we were going to do this on this podcast and i was just like matt kelly matt kelly, matt uh. kelly. Not that there's no no relation i just liked that it was and i think that you could probably pull off the costume at a halloween party Matt. Oh, for sure ja- that fucking jacket was the worst thing i've ever seen in my life the diamond there's a black diamond on the back of this red blazer that is probably the worst also cut a black out. diamond on his black on his red pants if you notice uh, yes yes yeah. yes and on the sleeves there's just like a half there's just like a little triangle cut out very futuristic yes but uh, absolute garbage i'm sorry he's Scott, he's continue. so awkwardly sleazy in the whole movie mm. though because he's like it. He's literally like doing a Unre- Simpsons monster voice. Unrelenting. <laughs> like, he does not let up once. It's terrible. Him screaming while he's almost about to hit the asteroid. Like, okay, the, I the like thing? that scene though. Like, no, that I like scene that. is not a joke that I should like. When it's like, hey, warning, hey, warning, you know, and and he's just oh, yeah. like he's what sweating the, and not say? looking. Um, big rock coming your way or something. I don't know. Big fucking rock coming. Yeah, like uh, they said they put fucking in the digital, like the red digital, like marquee <laughs> letters, like you would see at fucking Times Square. It was amazing. No, that, it was. It was let's great. not give it, was, it that much credit, all right? Because they they got that from a big fucking a big fucking rocks coming is what, yeah. <laughs> is what they they, they stole that. They went to some sleazy L A. Uh, movie theater and above yeah. the popcorn machine they just whoop took it yeah. and that's, that's like this that's a prop <laughs> there we go free yeah, yeah he's free just shit. he's on a whole he's it's almost like he's in a different movie than the rest of this movie because yeah. everybody in this movie is extremely 80s except for him he's who 50s feel, he's, yeah 40s. he's like hey toots like <laughs> Like, yeah, just insane. I think he was in the car in Giant Claw that like he, he survived. <laughs> hey, yeah. Daddy O! Hey, hey Daddy O! Let's go to the other side of the universe, Daddy O! Yeah. <laughs> no, man, this movie is just oh, it's wild. This movie's drugs. Like I felt high watching. Pure it. and simple. Pure and simple. Um, I don't like the middle of this movie at all um it drags ass but it's it's just like a 
it, I guess it would be a shit sandwich then, right? Because like, yeah, a shit sandwich would technically be two buns, which are normal food, and then feces in the middle, right? Right. Because right. when you have a, a turkey sandwich, it's a it's two pieces of bread and then turkey in the middle. So if it's a shit sandwich, are you mansplaining a sandwich to me, Scott? <laughs> I'm, ta- I'm mansplaining it to myself. <laughs> You're making sure that a sandwich is actually a sandwich <laughs> that you can use this analogy. Yes. <laughs> so the actor who played Maddie, I was like, I wonder if he's been in anything else. The I would answer love is it. the answer is no. Fuck. This is the only thing he's ever acted in. God damn. It. But in the grand scheme of unnecessary credits that an actor has been given. Please. He actually has two credits in this movie. Okay. C- credit number one is as Maddie Asher, and credit number two is as dead Maddie Asher, which I think <laughs> is completely unnecessary to be like, yo, that actor also played the dead zombified version of himself. Like, why is that in the credits? So unnecessary. That was actually part of his rider. It's like I, to get into SAG, I need two credits. Please. <laughs> so. Please. I need this. <laughs> Listen, I've read enough books about the rough days of the 70s and 80s in LA. You didn't need much to be in SAG, all right? No. You need to just stumble and get a line. Yeah. No, that 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 dude was, was something else. Even when he came back in the uh, bottom bun of the shit sandwich, um, <laughs> it was not... It, it was... <laughs> It was just odd. It would seem yeah, like it wasn't him, that character that he was originally written to be. The the other thing that's kind of crazy is it does this ending where it's all a dream, right? But it's not a surprise because they literally say this is a dream throughout the movie, you know? But I still, like, it almost made me question. Like, if they were really pushing it towards me, and then, like, everybody still seemed sort of the same. So I was yeah. like... Well, that's what I was going to say. It doesn't do, it- like, a Wizard of Oz type thing where it's like... Oh, and you were there, and you were there, and they're like the actors who played characters, but they're like vaguely different. It's just like, no, she just like dreamt that they were in a crazy asteroid planet yeah. for like 20 minutes. And they still were in a crazy asteroid planet because like they never changed the radioactive <laughs> dream, right? Like this, that was still the venue. Like the venue was yeah. the same. And I'm fucking, I don't know. I, I guess I'm asking for clarity. You just said something that just clicked into my brain. So you know what uh, our director's follow-up movie was to mm. <laughs> Sword and the Sorcerer? Mm-hmm. Radioactive A movie dream, called right? Radioactive Dream. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, yeah. 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 I, did, I did see that, and I was curious. Uh, I didn't explore <laughs> further. I figured that that might be future future yeah, fodder just, here just a little, <laughs> the podcast. Just a little homage, like yeah. he, a tip of a hat to something that he had done in the past. I just, the other thing that was crazy to me, right, was, you know, I'm watching the movie on my computer and she wakes up and it's just a dream. But I'm looking at the timer and I'm like, all right, well, there's still 10 minutes. So there's got to be another twist here. No, it's no. just a 10 minute concert. For yeah. the Dude. Rest of the Lunar yeah, Madness, right? That's why right? that's the bun of the shit sandwich because yeah. it's good again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, that song fucks. <laughs> Lunar. Yeah. It was it's Lunar, Lunar Madness. Madness. So, yeah, Lunar Madness yeah. is the song is the last song on in the movie and I do have a bit of a problem with Lunar Madness because it would be a better song if she didn't shout the title. Lunar Madness, like at yeah. the yeah. end of each chorus, because yeah. it really kind of like kills the the pacing of the song. And then yes. she talks in the middle. It's like she's promoting the upcoming album, and nobody wants to hear the new song. Exactly. But she's like, You're gonna, but this is going man, to be the single. You know? Like this is going to be the single. Please, Lunar Madness. I, I would make the argument though, and maybe this is just because I've been weirdly on a B fifty twos binge the last couple oh, days. Jesus, then but you fucking is, love Lunar Madness. Yeah, I was gonna say the Lunar Madness is not that far off from any other B fifty twos song where they are just like yelling the name of the song in the background constantly which also on that same note not like it's a deep cut song but man private idaho by the b-52s is a fucking fantastic song that i've listened to a lot this week i love when matt comes in with these like hot takes matt kelly hot takes which are very lukewarm that's vicious lips there's not really a plot there's no through line. No. The hor- honestly, the most horror part's the worst part of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you like synthy 80s pop music, that's absolutely absurd. You would love this movie. Yeah, I mean, if you're, I'm a, I'm a huge sucker for uh, movies with full 
performances or full songs. And this was a little straightforward because it was literally about a band and not yeah. just like a band showing up at like a party in a horror movie because their yeah. friends had a band, right? But I did really enjoy, I, I'm a, such a sucker for movies like that. And this had a few great tracks in it as well. I will say that... Um, I was a little confused about what a fungi dwarf was. They threw in like weird oh, sci-fi. Yeah, I wrote they threw that in like weird too. sci-fi lingo every yeah. once in a while to make sure that you knew that it was a science fiction film. And they, it, there's no without an explanation. So I did, which was not a, which was, must have been a bonus track because to the tune of the Klondike commercials, I I sang, "What would you do for a fungi dwarf?" Um, and no, uh, <laughs> but it wasn't anywhere in the movie. So I'm. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't. Man, I, but I'm good. pretty sure it was part of it. I just, I, I, I just couldn't they find couldn't it. They couldn't get the rights, before. dude. <laughs> yeah, they spent really all their weird. money on the music already. They couldn't really they couldn't get Klondike to really sign weird. Up on it. No, you're right. There's no real plot. It's no. This episode would have been exactly the same if Scott just sent you and I the soundtrack to the movie. It was like, do you just want to talk <laughs> about these tunes? Hey, Shit, yeah. why did there is do that? <laughs> Fuck, dude. We could have still, yeah, we could have still had the same conversation. Well, I think that you need to see it in in context. And no, no, the there's, context there's, is important. There's some, there's some serious undertones that we need to oh, discuss in this movie. We do. There is one thing we need to talk about. I'm sorry. Bug zapper guitars. No, we need okay, to talk about the guitars. anteater puppet thing that yeah! introduces the vicious slips at the end of the movie. <laughs> like it is, for sure, he's yeah. like straight out of the cantina. Yeah, but. But way less impressive. <laughs> so fucking just like, yeah, so, they found you know, it in a how, dumpster. Yeah. Which remember, Carly did t- lean, lean over to me while we were watching it. It was just like, I'm going to tell my kids this is Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, and that was before the anteater came up. So Dude, like the now anteater, especially. Man. The anteater yeah, shows up and he looks like a, a leftover prop from Showbiz Pizza. He's not oh even on I, like the, he can't be at Charles Everett rock, Cheese's yeah. place. He needs to be. Rockafire Explosion's first manager. <laughs> yeah, like. One hundred percent. What I don't understand, though, about it is that if they reused all of the masks from Killer Clowns in Ernest Scared Stupid, then what is this being reused from? Because you know for a fact it wasn't made for the movie. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. And they got all the use out of it. I think it, it probably fell apart five seconds after they said cut, and it was just a luck of the draw thing. They probably hired some dude who had to do, like, a sp- like did the Star Wars holiday special right when like B Arthur sings that song closing down the cantina and it's all like the D level versions of cantina aliens I'm sure it was like something from there and they just found it in a warehouse and was like we could reuse this before it completely falls apart before the moths totally take it over I'm just wondering if it was a previous Empire Pictures that's what you'd think like li- yeah. like rationally but you're shitting all over Matt's joke so we'll, we don't we'll you do <laughs> How You're correct. You? <laughs> I'm sorry. I went totally logical and it just totally derailed. <laughs> oh, I think I figured it out. Um, so. Zone Troopers? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm is thinking it? It's a leftover prop from Zone Troopers. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I bought that at VHSPS. There's a movie we will never talk about because it is unfucking watchable. <laughs> oh, we'll talk about it. But it'll be me talking about it. What did we watch? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, this correct. looks so bad. God, I love it. Empire Pictures so much. Hey guys, it's Matt interrupting the episode real quick to tell you two things. First of all, if you haven't already, go head up to the Patreon page at patreon.com backslash HMN podcast. There's a bunch of different tiers. You can get a ton of cool stuff like video versions of the episodes. Uh, getting the episode a week early, or weekly bonus content from us. This includes talking about movies like The Wicker Man and Teen Wolf and a bunch of other kind of bad movies. Dick Tracy is on the horizon at this time. Or just getting a newsletter from us once a month, letting you know what's going on in the lives of the Horror Movie Night team. But... If you don't feel comfortable doing a monthly Patreon donation, I totally understand. But would you consider maybe going over and getting yourself a cup of coffee from Rootless Coffee? Go to rootlesscoffee.com. And if you use promo code capital HMN10, you get 10% off your purchase and it helps out us. We get a little kick of that money. So if you want to help support the show and you're a fan of coffee, Rootless Coffee is a phenomenal coffee brand made from some of the finest beans in Michigan. I know. Who would have thought? 
and it's run by Jono of the pop punk band The Swellers. That's even extra cool if you're a fan of pop punk music, which if you're listening to Horror Movie Night, there's a good chance you are. Anyway, back to the show. All right, so Scott, what would your double feature be with this movie? All right, so I'm going to go with the more abstract double feature and I'll explain why. And then when you guys are done, I will tell you what my first thought was, but I thought that it was too on the nose. So I'm going to go with Phantasm, the original Phantasm, mm. because that whole movie is drugs to me as well. Like, and it nothing also ends makes being sense. a dream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really does. But then I feel like you'd have to do a quadruple feature because you'd have to find something that would be the quasi sequel to Vicious Lips, and then you would have Phantasm 2, and it would be an amazing night. But... I mean, that's that's a tall, tall order to watch four movies in a row. Tall, tall man order. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, oh, man. I, did, uh, I should have given I you time. I'm sorry I jumped on yeah. you, but no, you, you probably no. would have gotten there. That's, this, that's called an alley there. I wouldn't have gotten there. <laughs> I am very uh, short. All right, Kyle, I want you to go first because I'm actually torn yeah. between two things. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm going to say Rock and Roll Nightmare because I think <laughs> that there, yeah, I think that, you know, albeit not a sick 80s girl group uh it is a buff uncomfortable sick 80s boy group yeah Yeah, right 80s boy group it sort of takes those weird tonal shifts where it's maybe a horror movie maybe (laughs) like a concert film and then all of a sudden practice maybe just band practice (laughs) and then and then it turns into uh, whatever it turns into by the end of it. I think Rock and Roll Nightmare is a lot of fun. I think Vicious Lips was a lot of fun too. I think you're right about yeah. saying it's a shit sandwich, but at the same time, it's like the things that I rem- the things that I'll look back upon fondly um, are not the middle part of the film. Uh, exactly. That's <laughs> exactly uh, why I picked yeah. it because I was yeah. like, I know the middle's not good, but I no. remember the music and the yeah. the hairspray. Yeah. And I truly, my I, my friends that it. I had to abandon that ended up watching the last twenty minutes of the movie. Uh, one person in particular uh, came back to me the next day and was like, I think I liked Vicious Lips. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. Okay. Um, yeah, that would be my double feature. So here's, I'm going to tell you both of the ones that I'm torn on because Please. there's a reason for both. So we're just going to do a triple feature. Mm-hmm. So the first half of this movie with the girl singing in the uh, school play or the school talent show and like immediately this sleazy guy is trying to get her to sign a record contract and even in the beginning conversation with the woman who runs radioactive dreams and her weird henchman i was getting some real phantom of the paradise vibes just nice. out of like the tone of everything but once the music started hitting and especially with lunar moon like ending with this like 10 minute epic 80s song Uh, There's a movie that I've been trying to get picked on Patreon for God knows how long for no other reason than the soundtrack's great. I don't think Scott's ever seen this movie, but I have a feeling my boy Kyle might have my back on this. Uh, Streets of Fire. Oh, I've been saving it. I've I've, I've been on my radar for like four years. You are one of like five people that have told me to watch it. Dude, Streets uh, of Fire. So the whole soundtrack is from Jim Jim Steinbeck, who wrote all of Meatloaf's music in the 70s. So it's just got that very epic 80s rock vibe. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think Phantom of the Paradise in general tonally makes more sense. But by the time this movie was over, I was like, man, I really want to watch the Streets of Fire again. <laughs> I love that they're all like musical films, despite yeah. Vicious Lips not being a musical. Being a musical. <laughs> yeah. not, Vicious Lips is not anything. It's not. No, really it's one not thing. anything. It's and not, it's not even. Call... The, it's not the sum of its parts. It's literally just parts. It's parts. It's pieces. Parts. Yeah. 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 But I, I wouldn't uh, even call Streets of Fire uh, a musical, but in the traditional sense, because it's it's about a band. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. the band is playing songs. I would and consider that a a musical. I love the movie once, but I always felt weird calling that movie a musical because it's yeah. like the only songs are when these two people are singing a song that they wrote. Totally, like it doesn't feel like a traditional musical to me. But yeah. all right, Scott, what what have you uh, watched recently that you want to give a shout out to? Oh well, I was gonna say real quick that my immediate response to the the double feature was going to be summer party massacre 2 because that oh, also yes. is just a dream and it has yes. music but i i just feel like phantasm is more drugs than summer party massacre 2 Me and too. i also yeah. don't yeah. want to i don't want to pigeonhole myself too much because yeah, um, that is like top five movies of all time for Scott. all the time <laughs> it's an incredible <laughs> film uh, yeah it is it is and i want to talk about what i i want to talk about two movies that I've watched in the last week that are 2021 horror movies or quote unquote horror movies. And I really liked them, but I felt like I could have 
taken more from them. You know, like I feel like they they could have they could have gone the extra mile and become like my favorite movie of the year, but neither of them did. I don't know what my favorite mm-hmm. movie of the year is because honestly, everything has been pretty mediocre this year thanks to the pandemic. But I watched Candyman 2021 finally. I really liked it. I did not think that it was too ham-fisted with its discussion of you know racism and um the creation of projects and gentrification, things like that. I thought that that was actually a really good story mechanism. You know, I really liked it. And I also really liked the fact that it was a great way to kind of take the disparate sequels and bring them back into kind of a shared mythology. And I really liked that because it, it felt like, Candyman's dangerous again instead of being because like I, I felt Candyman to be a dangerous character like the concept of Candyman in the first movie when I was very young um, knowing about Candyman because it's like he kills indiscriminately but then yeah. I felt like I never saw the third one but I definitely saw the second one when I was younger and um, I felt like especially supernatural beings that become more f- hyper focused on a person or a family or something like that they're no longer scary to me because i don't give a shit about that person i give a shit about me right like mm-hmm. yeah that that's what makes some that's what makes a monster scary is if the monster can is gonna come after you i mean that's that's me so um mm-hmm. i really like the way that Candyman became dangerous again because Candyman yeah. does not give a shit about any one lineage Candyman is this ubiquitous vengeful spirit which is what i believed Candyman was when i was like seven you know so i mean like i really like that a lot about it i just felt like it could have been a little bit more impactful and a little different at the end um really liked the ending but i just felt like it wrapped up everything a little too really quick Uh, quick. so can i can i throw out my one my one giant suspension of disbelief that i've been sitting on waiting for you to watch this movie i needed a scene in this movie where everyone else sees the main character not with a giant beehive mutating across half of his body and not acknowledging it. Like, that was driving me completely insane. Yeah, well, when that, that started like to be revealed real. that that was actually happening and no one yeah. was like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with your face? Yeah. But, well, <laughs> like, I, I get that, but I also like the body horror aspect of it. I thought it was really good because it's also... All I'm saying is I don't mind the body horror, but I think that it should have been... Similarly to how he's constantly seeing shit in mirrors that no one else can see, that should have just been how he was seeing himself. But like to the normal world, he looks perfectly fine because he's sitting at a dinner with a fucking bleeding sore on his, on his hand, hand. And yeah. no one's like, dude, you should go to the hospital. Well, I, I, and get that so two things. Out. One, that's because he's I, a creative. People don't fucking point that shit out to artists. People, yeah. don't shit, people don't point that shit out. They're just like, oh, it's part of his process. Well, so two things. One, that dinner in particular, and this may be me reading too much into it, and I might sound like an asshole for, for the next two things I say. But one, I think that at that dinner, it's showing him being a non-entity because artists are non-entities and art is the entity and no one really cares about the artist. And so, yeah, he's basically falling apart and even his girlfriend slash manager is like, this dinner is really important for me. Don't fuck it up. You know, like, That's a good she read. doesn't even... That's a good reason. I mean, that I, I don't want to say Nia DaCosta was actually putting that in the movie, but I, I that's what I took from it. And then with him actually having sores on his neck and everything like that, like, so the people that he saw was a doctor or like a nurse practitioner. And I took that as a discussion or at least like a, a light critique of how the medical industrial complex in America sees black men. Mm. They are just, again, they're just a product. They're just a worker and um, no one really cares about their sickness. So, I mean, again, that might be me reading too much into it, but then he goes and sees his mom and she doesn't say anything about this because she knows he's cursed already. So that didn't really take anything away from the movie for me. But then again, I think that I may just be, putting my sociology hat on and kind sure. of reading into this a lot it was a, i mean it was a good movie and the, the I thought there was any really of the well negative critiques too. i was very frustrated with i also yeah. love the the use of the shadow puppets throughout the film i yeah. thought yeah. it was phenomenal yeah. i we we, um, we we really loved it carly and i did too i think it was just like that that ending just really felt like a studio trying to get 90 minutes into a pandemic to theaters film. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's 91 minutes. You know what I mean? That ending may have also been reshot. Mm -hmm. It's possible because 
during the pandemic, I remember talking to Jonathan and he hadn't seen a, an advanced copy of it, but he had said that like it did really badly at the test screening and everyone mm. felt like the ending was a mess. Oh man. And then like we had this two year pandemic. So it's also mm. possible that they like yeah. quickly threw together a different ending yeah. to like tie it up a little bit clearer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh um, no, I still and I can see I that because really it feels rushed. It, but it but... was yeah, yeah, that ending just felt a little rushed, but I I think it's because I was they worked so hard to build us into that mythos and like questioning reality and like all of this stuff, like semi Cronenberg, semi like really like truly the urban legends like way of looking at thing. I I, just, I really I really really loved it too. The invisible want... man type murder stuff was yeah. amazing. That was amazing. And I just wanted <laughs> like, I just wanted like it got me wanting that little bit more and whether yeah. that you know what whatever yeah, it I may think be. That's is... what I'm getting at is that it it didn't it, it, it inched towards a yeah. perfect movie, but it just didn't quite get there, and I don't know what yeah. would have made it perfect. But, I don't know, yeah, but I, don't, it, I don't know either. Yeah, you're right. I definitely left it thinking, I don't like, I I don't love it. Mm-hmm. I definitely didn't hate it, but mm-hmm. I can't wait for the next one. You know what right. I mean? Like yeah. I was like very yeah. excited for where. And Nia De Costa, now. like, is on my radar now. Like, big she time, did Big an time. amazing, beautiful, job. beautiful film. Yeah, like, beautifully directed. Very, that was very great. well done, well paced, yeah. well shot. And what was the second one? Last Night in Soho, which is an Edgar Wright film. Have you guys seen it? I Not haven't yet. seen it yet, but I I know it's in, it's, it's in my local quite theater. And yeah. Hopefully, we can get a date night going it's, to go see it. It's very good. It is very good, but it has the same problem as Candyman did. And I'm going to say less about it because I don't want to really like you know delve into it. But Edgar Wright, in my opinion, is a perfectionist, and mm-hmm. he when he makes a movie, every single breadcrumb he puts out gets eaten up at the end, right? And in this movie, it felt like there are a lot of loose breadcrumbs at the end. I saw the end way further in advance than I was expecting. And I also felt like a lot of opportunities and Chekhov gun type opportunities were lost. And I think that it, I don't know if that's his fault. I don't know if it's the studio's fault. I don't know if it's the editing room, but it was a good movie. It was very pretty, but I was really let down because, I mean, if if it wasn't an Edgar Wright film, I'd be like, this movie was pretty really really good you know but like that that expectation was much higher yeah i feel like though even with those because that you're describing how i walked away from the world's end when i saw the world's Mm. end where i was like i've never watched it where i was like man for how high of a bar i felt like he set with sean and hot fuzz this like kind of missed the mark Mm. but when i rewatch it i'm like oh i actually think that this movie might be the in a lot of ways the smartest film that he's ever made because it feels Mm. the most personal so i'm wondering if last night in soho i mean i have to see it for the first time but i i Mm. have a a sneaking suspicion that'll be one of those movies that i watch and i might put it in the lower end the first time and then upon like a revisit like kind of similar to like when you watch fight club for the second time and you already know what you're looking for in it that you're like oh my god there's this and there's this and the this and you kind of like piece together a lot more but i get what you're saying but i don't think that you're it's it's a very surface level movie for me okay you know like it's it's definitely not what you're i've got a i got a lot that i need to see i need to see that i still kind of want to see dune in theaters before it gets pulled oh i I watched that on on hbo max and (laughs) don't go to theaters to watch that it's it's very slow all right i'll i'll go real quick uh because I know Scott doesn't watch this. And I don't know if Kyle watches it. New season of Big Mouth dropped. Somehow it's filthier than it's ever been before. <laughs> Amazing. But it has a really just fucking insane. If you don't want this spoiled, skip ahead a little bit. At one point in the last episode of Big Mouth, the main character voiced by Nick Kroll goes to meet with God and God is Nick Kroll playing himself. <laughs> explaining that this kid's just going to have to deal with it because he created a show to work out all of the fucked up shit that happened to him as a kid. And it just becomes like extremely meta. It is one of the most on point discussions about like when you are a creator and you are writing stories that are like pulled from your actual life. Kyle, take us. Uh, I watched David Gordon Green's uh, Halloween, no kills, just Halloween for the first time. (laughs) I had never seen it. I had never seen it. Uh, And with all the Halloween kills talk, Carly and I had watched it. We were thinking we would go see Halloween kills. A lot of, you know, uh, uh, family stuff had happened in the time that we were going to go see it in theaters. And a lot of um, coming across people's 
uh, mixed reviews on social media has dampened the excitement that I ever had. Not because of negative or positive, just the general like I've heard too much, uh, yes. which was sort of yeah. felt like it happened when when ho- when this Halloween came out back in 2018 right yeah so like and you know i just wasn't on my shit which if i wasn't ever on my shit before like i'm never gonna get on my shit now (laughs) with a kid but it's it's my life and i love it nonetheless um but i watched it for the first time the shit's fun the shit's fun i was not as big of, of a jamie lee curtis fan and her character in this uh incarnation of halloween i thought it was really like she didn't come across as badass to me. Like it felt <laughs> like even though they they like they were trying to push this like mercenary like all I've ever done is prepare to like kill Michael My it just didn't I didn't buy it. But at the same time, like I had a lot of fun. Like when he was like out in the wild, like fucking killing people. There's a great like it didn't mimic the opening scene of the original film, but there was this beautiful track, like just one take tracking shot of him going and killing a random neighbor, like as his, you know. As, I think um, you're gonna like Halloween Kills then because it's a clip show, dude. Yeah, I hate like <laughs> uh, like, and that's that's honestly, I had no expectations going into this Halloween. Like I was just like, I want to see it because it was out and it existed. <laughs> and I don't remember what anybody said about it. And Halloween Kills is coming out, and the trailer was cool, and brr, 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 brr. and so I like I just wa- I just watched it, and it was fun. Like I don't think Carly and I both were like it's not good. Like it, you know, <laughs> like I have no, you know. I, I mean, they, there's plenty of money sunk into it. Like there's obviously love for the franchise and for the character of Michael Myers and Laurie Strode and uh, and for Loomis being like a you know a reimagined of Loomis as this other character and you know there was there was fun stuff that I had really no expectation for so I'll wait a few years go see yeah. Halloween Kills I you know what <laughs> you said it though and I just literally had an argument with one of our listeners Katie about this Katie she was making fun of me for how much I love uh, Halloween H2O but like oh come on Jamie Lee Curtis's character story arc is so much more compelling in Halloween H2O than it is in Halloween 2000. Agreed. Like, even if you take away, even if you take away the sister angle, which I I think we all can agree is kind of like a stupid tacked on thing that yeah. that was thrown into the film. The idea that like this terrible thing happened to this woman and now she's an alcoholic because of it, but like then it starts happening again and that's the push that she needed. To, I like, was right. Yeah, like to get over her shit and yeah. like she's like literally facing her demons of alcoholism yeah. through right. but, like I don't need her to be a survivalist. A, yeah, like the, like, <laughs> like <laughs> you know she turned into a straight up hermit. Like yeah. so, like a- something but then that how happened, does she even have a daughter? If she yeah. hates like where the did world they, yeah, life so. bro, where did that come from? <laughs> is Michael Myers the dad? Like, is it like a, is, like well, what's happening is, here? And and like that's the other weird thing too, I guess to a certain extent is like I've said this a couple times before. My biggest problem, I think, with both of the new Halloween movies is that they both want us to pretend that none of the sequels happened, but then very heavily rely on our motions tied to all of these other movies existing. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing is like yeah, if you too had smart a person, for its own good. Yeah, like, if you had a person like Laurie Strode, who I'm not saying that what she went through wasn't a terrible situation, but is it terrible enough that for 40 years nothing bad has happened to you since, but you are still in, like, I must kill this monster mode? Like, that makes it, like, she's already where, like, Sydney was after two Scream events. Right. (laughs) Because of, like... 30 minutes of her being hassled by a dude right. in a mask. Right, like, right. There's a there's a there's a limit in which the monster stops growing in your mind. And it's yeah. it's not 40 years <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion. I mean, I've never gone through something like this. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's true. We never experienced same... that, but that that is like you mentioning that I'm like, "Oh my god, I never even thought about it." But like that yeah. totally feels very inauthentic. Yeah, like, yeah. And and going and and building off of Candyman, like I I think that um, you know, Candyman is much more nuanced and the Candyman character in and of itself being well, derived Man... from Clive Barker and derived from all these mm-hmm. things has has layers of 
not that Michael Myers is not built off of intelligence, but, uh, but no, but yeah, like Candyman, the Candyman the character candy, has much The more. new Candyman also does it right, where after a certain amount of time, no one knows who the fuck Candyman is. Right, right, right. We <laughs> like, have, we have, we have to rebuild. We have yeah. like little like hints of familiarity, but we have to rebuild what Candyman is in our mind as the audience, as the as the characters figure it out too. I, I think with with Halloween, it's like we're they are really relying on. But also not hope, like also hoping that we don't like yeah. realize it's the same. And it's just, yeah, it was just, it was just, it, it was a lot. But again, I had, I had fun. Like, I, excuse me, yeah. I had fun with it. Uh, the other, the only other thing I watched was um, Double Double Toil and Trouble, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Yeah, um, boy, and that was a lot of fun. That's you know, speaking of drug movies, <laughs> fucking <laughs> bro, that shit's wild. <laughs> That shit is wild. Highly recommend. One of their first two feature length films off of The Adventures of Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. It was a Halloween one and a Christmas one. The Halloween one is obviously better. Uh, All right. Maybe a future episode. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> that was Vicious Lips. I'm new as here. picked by Scott. Kyle's still figuring out the show, but I don't be shocked, I guess, if Double Double Toilet Troubles the future. <laughs> In H-M-N fucking episode. February, he's going to be like, guess what, bitches? We're watching Double Double Toilet Troubles. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I have a host pick? What's up? <laughs> you got to uh, earn Scott, those. I know we said that he can get a pick in April, but maybe we should push that back to June. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, we will continue popping out great content for you every Thursday night. So stay tuned for more Horror Movie Night. Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.